I'm going to be talking to John Redfern, who is the CEO of Calgary-based Ever Technologies, about a project that they've, uh, they're undertaking with Italy's TurboDen to do a, a geothermal energy project in Germany. So welcome to the interview, John. Thanks. Pleasure to be here. Now, look, I'm really interested in this because we do a lot of work on, on energy in Europe. And of course, the EU has just brought out their re-EU pow EU power, uh, I think it's called, the strategy to basically get themselves off fossil fuels quicker to electrify mm -hmm. their economies. And, and the question everybody's asking is, where is this electricity going to come from? And so right. you're here you are doing a, a, a Calgary-based company doing this kind of that kind of work in Germany. So that really caught my my attention. Before we talk about the project, can you give us a brief description of how your closed loop geothermal works and why it's different from other? Yeah, I can do that. But just as on the side to address some of your earlier statements, the market in Europe has been transformed. They're always big in the energy transition, but of course the entire Ukrainian, tragic Ukrainian situation has really amped up the concerns about energy security. So it's not just a question of getting off gas, it's getting off Russian gas is what really uh, excites people. Now, what our technology is, is it's a new geothermal that can go anywhere that's not location specific. So I'd like to say that we're more different than, or, than traditional geothermal and traditional geothermal is than oil and gas. Both oil and gas and traditional geothermal are exploration games where you're looking for a rare constellation of geological facts and make a perfect permeable aquifer. And then you produce a fluid from that rock, either it's hydrocarbons or it's a hot brine. For ourselves, we do none of that. We basically go down brute force, drill out a huge 50 kilometer long uh, radiator and harvest the heat gently through conduction only and bring the heat to the surface from where we can use it either for direct heat or to create power through an organic Rankine cycle, the likes of which Turbinin wants to sell us. Okay, so if I understand this correctly, you're gonna put pipe down 50 kilometers and it's gonna have fluid in it and then the earth's heat will warm that fluid up and right. you, bring, you bring it in because it's in a loop, you bring it back and you run it through the, the orc system and that generates electricity. Have I got that correct? You've got that correct. And it is sort of a radiator, but it's like with 10, 10 laterals in it, each of which could be five kilometers long. So it's a big, a big radiator and that makes all the difference. Okay, well, let's talk about the, the project in Germany. Can you give us a bit of an overview of that, please? Well, the interesting thing about the project in, uh, in Germany is it's like a lot of our early projects. You know, at the start, we're at the start of the learning curve, we're just driving down our levelized cast to electricity. And so we want to pick the low hanging fruit, the places where things are, are easiest to make run economically. And Germany is a great one for that because they've got a stable uh, regime for uh, regulating geothermal. They've got a lot of geothermal in it there now. And they have a feed-in tariff that's equivalent to 251 euros per megawatt hour, which is huge to encourage this. So that certainly helps in the attractiveness. But the other thing you'll notice wherever we are in the world, our early projects are the easiest ones to do are often failed traditional geothermal projects. And there's a lot of those where they've drill, drilled down, found heat, but no permeability. And so we can come in all the geology has been done. There's good well control. There's a drilling pad. There's interconnection to the power lines. There's all the permitting done. You name it. All we have to do is come in and put our Everloop right in the same spot. And presto, we're good because we don't care if there's permeability. Got, gotcha. Let's talk about the economics for a moment. Did I hear you correctly? 251 uh, euros per megawatt hour for a feed-in tariff? Right. And that's guaranteed for 20 years. With wow. a good counterparty. Now, it's expensive to operate in Germany. You can't drill a well as cheaply here as in, in uh, North America. And the temperature gradient is very average, but uh, all in all, it's good for our generation one technology, which is all based on oil and gas technology. And so it's good for sedimentary rocks and sort of typical uh, drilling temperatures. Like most of our oil and gas building blocks tool-wise can't operate more than 150 or 175 degrees Celsius rock temperature. So for a lot of what we're doing in Europe, it's mainly district heating. There is some electricity, but it's not, you're not drilling for the ultra high temperatures you'd like for super scalable electricity, but it is good for heating. And heating, people always forget, is as big a market in Northern Europe as electricity is and a harder to, to decarbonize one. 
Um, you got in a place like Germany, nuclear plants, coal plants all being shut down, which impacts the base load electricity grid in the grid. But it also removes a source of waste heat that used to run a lot of district heating things. So it's a double double hole that needs to be filled. Right. I've, I've talked to other geothermal companies and uh, it's the combination of, in their case, uh, anyway, uh, the waste heat going into district heating systems plus electricity generation that makes the uh, project economic. Is that fair to say? That can, cer that can certainly help, especially since uh, heat is at an even better price than electricity. We're talking uh, 40, 40, 40 euros per megawatt hour heat, which if you consider the transition, the efficiency to convert heat to power an organic Rankine cycle, which is a low teens, that's like getting 400 euros per megawatt hour. And there's other areas where even higher than that. So heat, heat is even more profitable than electricity in a lot of the cases in Europe. That's why we've done a lot of our early development work. Uh, we're the largest leasehold uh, holder for geothermal in Germany. We've got about 70 different prospects just there and we're trying to high grade a few of them. Okay. Now, my understanding is that, that you're going to be able to service uh, 4,900 homes per Everloop, and there'll be four loops to one generator, so 50, 15,600 homes in total for this particular project. Is your technology scalable? It's very scalable. Um, certainly, it's scalable in two ways. I mean, when you're talking about heat, the important thing is in the scale. It's being able to put the heat source right the town because you can't ship hot water hundreds of miles. For electricity, for scalable, you want to find one hot area that you can keep adding capacity. In a place like in the western US, where you have a high temperature gradient, we'd have anywhere between seven or eight megawatts per ever loop. And you could drill 10 ever loops from the single pad. So you're talking 60, 70, 80 megawatts from one spot. And then you can go over a kilometer or two and do another spot. So it's as scalable as you need it to be. But more importantly, you can put it wherever you are eventually. Of course, at the start, as I said earlier, you want to pick the low hanging fruit. So you go for the high temperature gradients and or high feed in tariffs and or low costs. Like Alberta and North America is great for low drilling costs. Not is, so good is, on some other things. Right. John, in, in terms of your, your project in Germany, is this the kind of uh, technology where you can go in and you can drill in the middle of town or you can drill out in the suburbs so that you're, 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 you're close to the, the homes that you're going to power or the homes that you're going to provide hot water to for district heating? Yeah, exactly. We're distributable enough, modular enough, innocuous enough that you can put it close to the town you want to service which of course removes the NIMBY problem that is associated with all energy sources where you have the source here and the use is there and it is a pipeline or a transmission line in between. Nobody likes this. Here, you put it right where you need it, which also helps re with resilience as well. So what are the barriers for you uh, uh, for your technology to become, you know, utility grade scale? Like, you know, you're doing it's hundreds all, of thousands or millions of homes. It's all innovation through implementation, just like in the shale gas revolution. It's all about getting the hours in and drilling and driving the cost down and, and a few other uh, technological, technological developments we're working on. So I think, you know, for the first few of these projects, we have to finance them ourselves because we're proving up the technology. We're the main beneficiary from that technology and proven up. But longer term, we'll license the technology to whomever. That's why it's important we got people like BP, Chevron, BHP, Tomasic, and that in our investor group, because we're only 50 people. But if we can license the technology and work with these other larger counterparties, we can really move the needle on climate change. Well, to, to uh, close out this argument, uh, what's your expansion plan over the next five to 10 years, if you don't mind sharing? Expansion plan, again, is to do these demonstration projects like the one in Germany. We're also going to have one in uh, New Mexico in the next few months that's going to prove up our deep, hot technology. We're going to be drilling well seven kilometers deep, probably up to about 400 degrees C. And once we prove up that technology and some of the other things we're working on, it's basically just making sure we get enough people using it, drilling it. And we're getting a tremendous response, the number of different people who want to drill their own Everloops. And we're here to facilitate that and enable that. Uh, it's not, not a threat to us. John, thank you very much for this and good luck with your project in Germany. Thank you. It's a pleasure.